Boss hog hat. <laughs> Boss hog hat. Gosh, that's sacred mud, son. <laughs> you hear that? That's sacred mud. I ain't getting washed. Hey, we're back. Boss Hog Jerome here. We're in bleeping Jeep Garage. We heisted Matt's garage again for another tips and tricks episode about some bolts. Why certain bolts have shoulders, some bolts have points, and then some bolts are just normal. Cut! All right, so here we are. Some people probably don't look that far into bolts. I do, because I'm working with stuff and sometimes you need the right bolt for the right job. Um, if you'll notice, if you can see it or not, this one's pointed and has a shoulder on it. This kind of bolt right here, it's going to be for a rubber bushing style link, leaf spring, control arm, if you're building a custom rig, you may have an anti-rat bar or something like that completely where you have a rubber bushing. When you slide this through the hole and it goes to the other side, the reason it's tapered is they don't always line up exactly right because it's a rubber bushing, you have a mount and all that. When you slide that through there, that hole is tapered to help it go through the bracket on the other side. And what we're getting at with this video today was leaf spring bolts on rig. Say you have a rear Cherokee leaf spring bolt and you're having trouble getting it through and you've replaced your bolts because you put a lift kit on or your bolts were rusty and you had to cut them off. Common problem, you gotta cut the head of the bolts off to get the leaf springs out to put your new lift kit on. So then you buy the new bolt. Go to Tractor Supply, go to your local hardware store, Home Depot, you get that bolt flat. Then you beat and you beat and you bang and you beat and you bang and you beat and you never get the bolt through the bracket on the other side. So the trip, the trip, the trick is you slightly bevel the end of the threads right here just enough that you don't tear the threads up anymore because if you keep beating on it, you're gonna beat the threads up, you're not gonna get the nut on there, and when you finally do get it through, then you're upset because the nut doesn't go on. So, the trick, grind the head of the bolt ever so slightly just to a point. Make sure that the bolt is obviously long enough to get this through so that you can get your lock nut to go back on there and still have the proper amount of threads to engage your lock nut. But this right here will go through that bracket real simple and you can wiggle it around like when you take your socket on there and you grab it, you can wiggle it just enough and you can get that to go right through there and force it through. Like on my Jeep, I have leaf springs, but on top of that, our engine mounts are rubber mounted engine mounts from leaf spring bushings, okay? Well, when I go to put my engine mounts back in, I always have a little bit of trouble getting one of them in, and I always have a taper bolt on that side, because if I don't, the way the twist of the engine is and the way those mounts are, I have just a little bit of trouble to get it in there. So that has to happen to get that in there, because I'm never gonna get in there, because I can't get a hammer into my engine mount and drive it in there for one, but for two, it has to be tapered. So you got the tapered one in there, that's the tip and the trick for that. And we'll just explain why the shoulder is on this bolt real quick so you understand. So like NASCAR, everybody sees them throw those wheels on really fast and they have those lug nuts glued to the wheel. We all know how they do that in a sense. Some of you do, some of you don't maybe. They glue the lug nuts to the wheel. So they throw it on there real quick and the nut chucks up on there and it just sits there like that. And now when they slam it on, the wheel's sitting up here. They take that impact and they go boom, 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 real fast. Well, this spins right on there, okay? Well, this little shoulder is to keep from cross-threading the bolt and to keep from cross-threading the nut. Because when you set that on there, it lines it up and it just goes right on every time. And that's the great part about a bolt that has that shoulder on it. You typically don't have to worry about cross-threading it or putting the nut on wrong. Tapered bolt, how you gonna do it? Nobody knows. It's kind of hard if you think about it. You don't have a whole lot of options, maybe. Maybe you only have a hand file and you gotta clamp it in a vise and grind it down. That, that's fine, that'll work. This is a little tip right here. Take your four and a half inch grinder. Pretty much any grinder is gonna have a flat spot on it. Clamp it up into your vise like so. It's gonna have a lock trigger on it. You hit the trigger. Make sure you have your safety equipment. Obviously, this is probably not the safest way to do things, but it works really good. Grab your bolt, you spin it like this right on your flap wheel. Flap wheels are great, way better than grinder knocks if you don't already have flap wheels. You just spin it a couple times and boom, there you go. The way we did this, 
Matt's got a disc sander, works great, went right on there. The way we actually did it, took a drill, put it in there, held it, spun it right on there. Spun it out real nice, made a nice good clean. And if you had a lathe, obviously you could do all kinds of stuff. Cause you know somebody in the comments gonna go, I've got a lathe and I'd just bevel it on my lathe to a precise 33 and a half degree bevel. And you're gonna be like, great for you, dude. Not everybody's got one of those. So I got a freaking grinder. I have belt sanders and I bet you I would use my grinder like this before I busted out the belt sander 90% of the time just because I already have this dude out. And I'd set it down and I'd go, woo, and I'd grind it out and that'd be how I got my bevel.